now seems as good a time as any to do this. Um, it's half past four in the morning at Vienna Airport. I can't really sleep m much more. Um, and I'm still not even halfway on my journey, which is fun. They say there's nothing as dangerous as an idiot with an idea, and as ever, I am that idiot, and I've had an idea. Can I get from home to Abu Dhabi on a shoestring budget? Sounds like a fun idea. Um, I'm currently sitting watching snowplows bustling around Vienna Airport at four in the morning, which isn't as fun as you'd think it is. But hey, there we are. We set off yesterday at about midday from home, got to Luton Airport, we flew at about six o'clock in the evening to Vienna, landed here just as all the restaurants were closing, so I've had very little to eat. Um, I've got some paprika Pringles that I've had a sort of early morning snack on. Um, I should be able to get some coffee from somewhere in about an hour's time. Um, but yeah, that's that's the sit rep. That's the opening leg of this absolute marathon journey. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll keep you posted on how it goes. This is, this is just the start of it. The flight from Vienna to Tirana proved to be a crowded and choppy hop. The milder drizzle in Albania, a sort of relief from the bitter cold in Vienna in December. I don't know much about Albania beyond what I'd seen in an old episode of Top Gear. The terminal was small and bustling, but mercifully had a bar. I passed the turnaround time chatting to a fellow traveller, an American student studying in the UAE. Eventually I boarded the packed final connection for my onward journey. Next stop, Abu Dhabi. We landed late at night and, with a final Covid test in the terminal, I was soon in an Uber and on my way to a hotel. Conveniently, I had a friend who was working in the Emirates at the time and was living in a hotel, so to keep costs down, I was going to bunk with him. After a well-earned sleep, we rose the next morning and feasted on fried bananas and hot sweet coffee from a stand, before jumping in a taxi to the circuit. The boys' own adventure had now begun. This is nuts, mate. <laughs> We spent the day lounging in the sun watching the Formula 2, F1's FP3, and finding the largest Dutch congregation outside the Netherlands in the Orange Paddock, and then eventually hurried back to our seats for the qualifying for the final race of the season. We 
We sat back and enjoyed qualifying as the sun set, relenting its thermal torture over us. We'd shied away from buying beers too early on, courtesy of their almost prohibitive price. Fourteen pounds for a pint, scarcely believable for me, and out of this world for Dan and his northern beer-based pricing. However, as the evening cooled off, we buckled and sipped on cold ones watching Louis Capaldi live in concert, of all things. After a brilliant concert tucked underneath Ferrari World, we wound our way into a cab and back to the hotel. Dan had work the next day because for some reason Friday and Saturday are the weekend in the UAE, so that being a Sunday, he'd have to go off to work in the desert. Still, he promised he'd make it for the race. After bananas and coffee, a taxi dropped me at Yas Mall instead of Yas Marina Circuit, and after getting lost and finding a pop-up car museum, I eventually made it to the track. And, well, here we are, we're actually at the end point, we're at Yas Marina Circuit, somewhere I never particularly thought I was going to go, let alone on a complete shoestring budget that would take me three days to get here and end up sneaking into a friend's hotel room to make it all work. But we're here, we're... I turn around. Behind me is Yas Marina Circuit. We're down right at the repro felt spot, now turn five, because they've taken out the little dog leg chicane. We've seen racing action yesterday, we were over there yesterday in the regular stands. Um, the tickets we've somehow blagged for today, Sunday, the race day, we've got the suite behind us as well. This is so pompous. Pre-race entertainment came in the form of the marshals who were playing ball or patank in the gravel at the side of the track. But eventually they packed away their ball set and it was time to go racing. I shan't bore you with the details of the race, so we'll skip to around lap 56, just before the great unlappening. As the cars come past, you can see the safety car with Lewis behind it. Then comes Lando Norris, the Alpines of Alonso and Ocon and Leclerc, and Sebastian Vettel. And then it's Max Verstappen. Those drivers would be allowed to unlap themselves, and the final lap would go by as normal. Although, as the record books show, the remaining lap of the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix in 2021 is far from normal. The lapped cars move out of the way, and Max Verstappen closes in on Lewis Hamilton. He has one lap to make his pass. We hand over to Dan for video coverage. Exciting last oh, lap I've ever seen. There's Alonso two donuts. Right there, right there is where it happens. Fucking hell. And 
culminates, uh, well, it doesn't quite culminate a fantastic holiday, but it culminates a fantastic weekend. This has been incredible. We make our escape from the track via the mall and opt to while away the evening with some quiet and cheap beers at a nearby hotel. We end up in a club with some Dutch fans. Well, this it's now Monday. Um, I'm not feeling ship shaven perfect. I was out last night until quite late with some uh, Dutch fans we met in a hotel bar, and uh, a lot of drinks were imbibed. We had a very pleasant evening, little expensive, but otherwise a fantastic way to cap off a mind-blowing weekend. And I'm now down on the promenade, sort of the waterfront in downtown Abu Dhabi. Um, got all the lights behind me. And um, yeah, the, for me the Madcap Adventure still has a third left to run. I've got the journey here, the race weekend, and I've still got to get back home. Flying back tomorrow, my plane takes off at just before two o'clock in the afternoon. I'm off to Kiev. I've got a day in Kiev or an overnight in Kiev, which is it's going to be mad. And uh, yeah, this is the adventure that just keeps on giving. Absolutely surreal. Okay, everything got a bit mad there. Um, I'm in Kiev now. I'm where I'm supposed to be. I My flight out of here is at 9.35 tomorrow, so I've got to leave the hotel at about 6 in the morning. But I know what bus I need to get to get to the other airport in Kiev. Kiev has, I think, three airports. Borisbil something or other and then another one. I'm flying out of that middle one, I believe. It doesn't really matter, I can't remember the name. Anyway, I know which bus I need to get. I'm in Kiev. I'm just about to sort of freshen up and head out for dinner. But obviously there was a lot of chaos getting here, unsurprisingly. Um, woke up this morning, packed up, had coffee and fried bananas with Dan outside the hotel, very nice. Um, got to the airport, went to check in and... I was surprised to find out I needed a PCR test to fly out of Abu Dhabi. Didn't think I needed that. Probably should have double checked to make sure that wasn't something that was going to happen. Didn't. It happened. Got there. I said, I've got I've done my fit to fly for the UK, a uh, regular lateral flow one, swabby swabby sticky sticky into little dippy tray. Um, wasn't having it, uh, that nor um, the fact that I'm double vaccinated. But just to leave Abu Dhabi, I needed to have a PCR test. Immediately there was one about five, 10 minutes away. So I ran back outside with all my bags, found a nearby cab driver, and he absolutely rocketed us across to a small miniature city thing near the airport where there was a giant PCR testing center. They were able to do a two hour test. So effectively you go in, you do the quick swab, they then have it turn around for you in two hours. It cost a bit more than, um, um, bit more than the five hour one or 24 hours. So through an incredible amount of money, somewhere in the region of at least 70 pounds of that to get it done. Um, and then got back in the cab, back to the airport, and then had to sit and wait until I got the results for it. Checking closed at one o'clock. Um, I hadn't heard anything until I landed in Kiev. And that's the crucial part. I did land in Kiev, obviously I got to Kiev. I, panicked went over to the desk and said look i haven't got my results in i tested myself this morning i'm clear i've got a test coming so it'll show up on your system as having done it properly and thankfully a different person at the checking desk a bloke who seemed to be dealing with the sort of devastation of a lot of people not knowing this including sort of people who natives to abu dhabi and natives to the uae um so it clearly seemed to be a fairly common problem and the guy could see that i'd done as much of the right thing as possible and just printed out my boarding card and rushed me through to security and 
passport check control and then I literally had to book it to the gate because it said um, final call for my flight. Got on the flight, it was a damned full flight as well, lots of people flying from um, UAE to Kiev. Don't know why, it must be a lot of people doing the bounce route that I'm doing. But there we go, we're landed in Kiev, five hour flight, edited the Drive Tribe podcast while I was on the plane, watched some old episodes of Top Gear. Um, and read my book and now we're here we're in kiev it was a uh interesting enough airport um then took the train across the city and now i'm in kiev you can't see it out the window because it's dark outside it's um quarter past eight so it's getting close to dinner time i'm quite tired um but yeah there we go i'm in kiev i'm gonna go find something to eat for dinner maybe a chicken breast with some garlic butter in the middle i don't know what they're called but we'll they seem to be popular, might, might be popular here. Um, but yeah, that's the story. We're in Kiev. This is probably the longest single VT I've done for this project so far, but it's been an absolutely wild day, more wild than some of the days previously. And um, yeah, I need a beer or a glass of wine and something to eat. So I'm going to go do that. My evening mooch around Kiev proved successful, and I feasted on lager and chicken for eight pounds. Then I was up at six for a walk to the station to start my onward journey. Kiev to Budapest with a rush transfer to Luton for my final hop home. We landed with a bumper back in England, and that was the end of that. How to do an F1 weekend on a shoestring budget. If you want to read more about my adventure and some of the bits I missed out in this video, check out the link in the description below. That'll take you to the full article that used to live on DriveTribe. Now it just lives on my website. But check out the pretty pictures.